Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Manly Pinterest Show with your host, Jeff C., featuring Mike Alton, Stefan Hovnanian, and Wade Harmon, with special guest Cynthia Sanchez. And now, the Manly Pinterest Show! Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. We've got a great show for you today. We have some uh, a very, very special guest with us, Cynthia Sanchez from Oh So Pinteresting. Now, um, she actually started probably my journey to Pinterest because I was driving back one time uh, from Kansas, and I happened to be listening to Michael Selzner's uh, social media marketing podcast, and this lady came on and started talking about Pinterest and all the things that it could do for you and the exciting things and I was hooked and that started my journey towards Pinterest. So I'm very excited to have Cynthia Sanchez on this show. Cynthia, welcome. Welcome Thank to Manly you. Community. Thank you, gentlemen. So great to be here. Thanks, Jeff. What a great introduction. Oh, yeah. Well, it, I, seriously, that was what started. I had really no idea about Pinterest until I, I uh, kind of on my journey. So Wow. Well, I'll definitely let Mike know that that was the change for y'all. I'll keep him, I'll keep him up to date. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like, well, um, can you just give us kind of a background really quick, like uh, what you were doing? I know you had a, a career before you started, oh, so interesting. Kind of what got you started, where you are now, and where you kind of, what your kind of workflow is right now. Sure. Um, it started, I guess, in 2011. I joined Pinterest a little bit reluctantly. My mom sent me an invitation. At that point, it was by invite only. And I said, you know what? I don't have time for that. I'm working. I've got kids. Who, I've got a life. You know, I don't need to be in, on another social network. Um, and then one weekend, I just kind of said, okay, I'll take a look, mom, you know, like we do with everything else our moms say we should do. And um, I was hooked. It just, you know, hooked me in. And every other word out of my mouth was Pinterest. I bought stuff because of Pinterest. I was making you recipes. My husband got this long list of projects to do around the house because I found them on Pinterest. Um, so I decided to start a blog about it. And it was really just to learn more about blogging to maybe someday start an online business based on my profession at that time, which was being an oncology nurse. Um, I worked you know, in a cancer center and I thought, well, maybe somehow I can tie in nursing to an online business in the future. But let me figure out this blogging thing and I'll do it with something fun, you know, like Pinterest. So I started the blog and one of the posts that I wrote was about getting my haircut using Pinterest. I took my phone into my salon and, and they saw, you know, I showed them all the pictures and then I wrote a post about it and I left my business card at the salon. A local business owner came in, found my card and gave me a call and said, hey, we need help with social media and Pinterest. Can you help us? And I said, whoa, uh, that's not what I do, but let's talk. You know, if somebody's asking for your help, you got to at least talk to them, right? Right. So uh, we talked, and they said, you know, this isn't our business of what we're doing now. is isn't what we do full time, but we're giving it a shot. If it's something you think you want to do, and maybe we could work it out, let's let's give it a try. So that's kind of how the business started, and from that moment on, I just dove head first into learning everything I could about using social media for marketing a business, and. Um, to courses and you know kind of shifted my focus on Pinterest and how I was gonna you know work with it and use it and the blog then really took a big shift to you know personal stuff done with Pinterest and, and stuff other people were doing with it and discovering on it to how to use it as a marketing tool um, and since then the blog has grown this is actually the second year it's the second year birthday of the blog this month actually like day after tomorrow um, is birthday number two and the podcast just turned a year old so now right now we have a weekly blog post and a podcast uh, that goes along with it wow well so how many uh, podcasts do you have like in archived I mean I guess a uh, year's worth. so that's yeah, that's yeah we just wrapped up 53 episode 53 just just went in earlier this week yeah awesome. so there's yeah they're each about 30 to 45 minutes long um, so a lot of information there that's all just dedicated to one aspect of Pinterest or another very cool. Well, I know, you know, I think Mike Alton does the same thing. He takes pictures and goes to his hairstylist. Um, so I know he's probably <laughs> want to share something about that. So, Mike, do you have some questions you'd like to share with, to ask Cynthia? Yeah, you want me to go first? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, and, and Jeff's already kind of hit on this, is that all of us end up learning from one person or another, um, at, least, at least to get started. Uh, you know, we've talked in previous episodes, and we've talked offline. We've got our own mentors and, and people that uh, have really helped guide us on different platforms. So I was just wondering, is there anyone in particular that you've really learned from on Pinterest or is doing a great job? 
Um, and, and if there aren't necessarily individuals, maybe some brands that are really just killing it on yeah, Pinterest. Yeah, when I first started and, you know, just kind of going back that far, it was right as about the time Beth Hayden's Pinfluence book came out. Um, and that was the first book, well, it may not have been the first, but the big, you know, the one book that I knew of at that time, and I'm not sure it was first, uh, but just published by a traditional publisher about Pinterest. Um, so she was kind of the one that kind of showed me, oh, yeah, it is possible. And, and you know, I read a lot of her work and learned from her and, and, and her book and have been in contact with her, um, you know, since then. And um, and then after that, I soon found Kelly Lieberman's Pin Chat, uh, Twitter, weekly Twitter chat. Um, and have been a part of that, you know, pretty regularly. Not so much this past six months, but prior to that, you know, was there every Wednesday night. Um, and it was just she interviewed brands and what they were doing on Pinterest, or to have different discussions, answer people's questions. Um, right now, Target is doing an amazing job with Pinterest um, and how they're incorporating into their traditional, you know, media avenues as well as in their other social networks. Um, another. I guess brand doing it really well would be Whole Foods. They do a great job, um, you know, talking big, big names. But um, you know, there's a lot of the things and tactics that they that they do and strategies are things that anybody with almost any budget can do. Now, will your images be quite as professionally polished as Targets? Maybe not. Um, you know, will you be able to make those cool videos where people actually walk into a Pinterest board? Maybe not. But I think you can still do a lot of the things in a different, you know, in a different way that would still get the message across. Well, I have a Nordstrom's another one too, right? Yeah, yeah. Nordstrom's is doing great as far as bringing it offline and kind of combining the two worlds. Yeah, definitely. Well, Cindy, I have kind of a follow-up question to that. Um, you know, a lot of us started doing Pinterest because we were getting blog traffic. I mean, it was a, it's a, you know, your the shelf life of pins is a really long time. Um, but what would you tell a guy who, you know, because guys see Pinterest and they're like, I don't want to look at wedding dresses or hairstyles <laughs> or how to do nails. What would you tell a guy who said, you know? I hear I'm supposed to be on this Pinterest thing. Do I, does it really make a difference? What would you say to that? I would say it 100% makes a difference. Um, if you're blogging, if you ha or any kind of content creator out there, you know, podcaster, video guy, you know, infographic maker, whatever it is, um, yeah, Pinterest can definitely make a difference for you. And getting past those, the the main Pinterest feed of nail tutorials and wedding dresses is is easy to do you know once you get in and you start customizing your Pinterest feed to be you know just only show the content that you're interested in the topics that you're interested in and you're not interested in nail tutorials you probably won't ever see one again um, you know unless you're a guy that is you know who knows um, so <laughs> it can be it, it can be what whatever it is that you want it to be um, you know but I, I've heard this plenty of times like I got on there and I looked at it and it there isn't anything on there for me and it's like well you kinda have to customize it you have to work with it a little bit to really be related to you um, and I, I, I almost somewhat get a little bit offended that it, you know there, well, it's just nails and it's just a bunch of women and I don't belong there. It's like, well, women have more diverse interests beyond nail tutorials and wedding dresses and cupcakes. We do, I promise. Okay. Um, ask your wives. I'm sure your wives do, you know, your girlfriends or your sisters. Um, you know, so just because I do have a board dedicated to, you know, my favorite baked goods of cookies and, you know, whatever recipes that I want to bake doesn't mean that I don't also have a board about, you know, SEO and analytics and, you know, aerospace engineering you know who knows um, so it, it you know don't don't let that you know aisle of the grocery store fit you know cause you nerves and, and cause you to run away you know it's that's still great, there for that's you. A great, that's a you great know? analogy. Stefan you had a question for Cynthia? Yeah I mean I had a one thing I guess for me because I don't blog frequently and therefore as a content creator I find myself kind of stuck because I'm not I'm not Mike, you know, cranking these things out every day, um, you know. Uh, but but I guess my so my question to you is what I've noticed about Pinterest at least is that it it it's rather antisocial. It doesn't have a lot of the social components that Facebook and and you know Twitter and, and Google Plus obviously have. Um, even LinkedIn, you know, it's very much about what you want to see. It's a much it's very much about what you want to curate on your own boards. And you know, for me. I use Evernote, so uh, but I recognize the value as uh, as some you know of Pinterest. So I guess my you know, I guess where I'm going with this is the boards that I've created have been a lot more about how to cross promote content, 
And mm -hmm. I guess you know part of this is is that is it a bad thing? Is it is it a situation where um, you know I don't care I don't care so much about the the design of the images going up on a Pinterest board about the hangouts I'm going to be on this week? But I mean uh, strategically, I guess uh, what are some of the things that we can do if if that isn't you know, if we're not into the images, if we're not into really even curating our own content, but we want to use Pinterest as a as a tool to direct people who are on Pinterest to be able to share, our, you know, to, to be able to find our stuff, not necessarily even share it, but just find it. Okay, so I'm trying to understand your question. So you want to use Pinterest as a tool for traffic generation, but you don't necessarily want to spend too much time on images. It's uh, it's so. To cross promote content, I think, is the best the best way to describe my question. It's been okay. a tough one to phrase. I've been trying it all week, so my apologies. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I just want to make sure I answer it for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pinterest is a great tool to cross promote. So you may not blog a lot on your site, but you do post frequently to Google Plus and create content for Google Plus, which are in essence mini blog posts, I guess is a way that you could put it. Um, you know, there's there's a couple of things that you could do. If you could isolate that that post on Google Plus, um, you could um, you know, using a tool called ShotPin, take a screenshot of that post on Google Plus and then it would link back to your Google Plus account. Now, is that going to get a lot of engagement? Probably not because you don't have that eye-catching image. Uh, it does, uh, images are so still very, very important on Pinterest um, and it, they don't have to be gorgeous and I know you figured out a way to kind of put in your, your Google Plus tips and that's the best, uh, that's a great way for you. Take that, those couple of blog posts that you have, break each one of those down into an image and you know make a, in your place a Google, uh, or in your situation a Google Plus tip um, and then pin those individual tips back to either the blog post back on your site or onto a Google Plus page where you've been releasing them and talking about them or actually back to that Google Plus post where you talk about them again. Uh, Jimmy uh, Lanley had a good, uh, good point. She said uh, it's like circling, the, when we were talking about, you know, the stream in Pinterest, it says it's like circling the right people on Google+. Plus. If you follow the right boards on Pinterest, you will find some fantastic content. And I think, I, I mean, that's, you know, what Stefan did with his Google+, Plus tips, I thought was it was awesome. I mean, I think that's a, a great way to cross-promote promote them together because, you know, people could find that, they could go to your post and read about it, and so I thought that was a great idea, Stefan. So I used it anyway. So yeah, yeah. What, well, like, the, the point the point behind it was to say, okay, hey, I have a board for that. You know, it's it's always been at least for me, it's always been the articles I write, everything I do has always been around revolved around the idea that if I come across a situation where I can tell somebody I can I have that resource, I can just say, you know, whether it's not even link drop, but say, yeah, I have a Pinterest board about that, or I have this about that, or you can find this here. You know, and it's just to be able to be that connection resource and. Um, and that's why I was curious because I, I hear so much about, you know, curating other people's stuff and repinning here and repinning, you know, these boards and whatnot. And I'm like, I don't see personally, I don't see how valuable that is, unless obviously there's a great port, uh, you know, something great that I find from somebody else offline, you know, and not not on Pinterest that I stick onto a Pinterest board where I can tell tell people, yes, it's on my Pinterest board. And so that's that's where I was going with this whole, you know, with the whole thing. And that's why I did the. Um, uh, you know the uh, the board you guys are talking about with my pro tips because it was a way for me to aggregate everything into one spot and then um, you know and give people one place to go out and uh, and find some of the things that I'm putting really everywhere since I don't I don't blog frequently on my blog about specific things so. Well, yeah, yeah. And you, oh, I'm sorry. You just you just mentioned it right there that you created it as a resource for people. And, and you know, if you approach your account that way, a business account that way, you're you're creating resources in in categorized resources for the people that you're trying to bring back to your site, to your content, to your blog, to your Google Plus page, wherever it is that you're trying to send them to. And and that's that's the perfect approach. Uh, we, I do this. I I didn't think it would work, but it's worked really well. I actually take uh, and the cool thing a lot of people don't know is you can pin video. And so these. Uh, Hangouts is I have a Google Plus Hangouts worth watching page, and I get a lot of traffic. People going there because they're finding this is this is where I can find some good shows to watch, and show, so that's really kind of the same thing as you've done, Stefan. And so, the another question, uh, Cynthia, is how often do you refresh pins to put them back on in the feed? You know, a lot of people will move them to a different board so it shows up again in the feed, kind of as a tactic. How often do you do that? Is there a certain schedule that you follow? 
There isn't a schedule that I follow either for myself or, or for my clients. It really depends on what's going on. I mean, I have content, you know, going back a couple of years now. And every now and then it's like, you know, people are asking me questions about hashtags. I wrote a hashtag article quite a few, you know, months ago. I was like, well, there's a lot of questions coming up about it. It's obvious, obviously something people are wondering about. Let's go ahead and put it back on the Pinterest feed. Um, so I kind of try to listen a lot and to hear what people's questions are and, and keep that in mind if that's something I've already written about. And if I haven't written about it yet, well, then that gives me another idea of something to write about. Um, and for clients, when I'm trying to grow their account and I'm trying to really get them started, I kind of think about... Um, okay this article is about this one particular topic is there a way that we could create another board that makes sense where I could then repin that same article even though it only came out six or eight weeks ago to another board that could then expand our account attract more followers and then get more attention back to that article um, so it, it just depends on you know I guess the state or you know where you're at what you're trying to do with it but yeah there isn't a schedule but I do recommend repinning it because your, your account changes people that you reached you know three weeks ago are going to be different than who you reach now or even two days ago at you know pinning at different times of the day or different day of the week great Wade you had a question uh, yeah um, I'm, I'm big on the interaction of social media and Stefan he actually touched on uh, when he said uh, Pinterest isn't really that social mm -hmm. and I guess my question is uh, other Pinterest authorities they don't seem that interested uh, with getting the engagement and the, com and the conversation in their pins so wh what's your opinion on the conversation factor and, and should we be trying to uh, engage people on these on these boards and these pins that we're putting up you know, as, as a content creator, as a business owner, I think you should be trying to engage, but keep in mind that the way Pinterest has evolved and the way it's being developed, even from Ben Silverman, one of the co-founders of Pinterest, he said he's building, they're building Pinterest not to be the next Twitter or Facebook or big social network. It's, they're building it to be more of a search and discovery tool. Um, it's not about that social communication. That's why you can't private message. That's why you know those those social components that you're missing aren't really easy or there. Um, but since it is a little bit more of a challenge as somebody that's trying to to build a following and, and get attention to your account, those little bits of conversation that you can have really do stand out. So if somebody pins your content and you go and start a conversation with them about that or if you see a piece of content that you really enjoy and you start a conversation in the pinned comments, um, that can really get you noticed and is, is one of those those kind of strategies to, to help make you stand out a little bit more. Um, but it is, think of it more as a, a human put together, curated, created Google, if you will, um, and that can kind of change your shift and your focus on how you really think and how you think about and how you use Pinterest. I want to riff on that. Um, <laughs> I switched to a business account this week, and I noticed something that was really cool. I have a lot more information about the people pinning my stuff. There's just more of it, you know, the, mm -hmm. because I have a verified my website. I verified my website already with my personal account. I was able to see like you know, a very limited amount of probably about today's worth of activity, but now I can go back a little farther. So just based on what you said, you know, one thing I think could help with what you're talking about, Wade, is to go, if you have the ability, at least if you have set up a business account, and I'd love your thoughts on whether business versus personal is a good or bad thing, whatever, um, for people like us, you know, um, with blogs and websites. But anyway, what I was going to say is to go to, you know, my most recent pinned or something where, you're not going to see the repins. There's no ripples like we have on Google+. It's hard to find people that you know, are two, two steps, three steps past, but it'll still show up that they've pinned your content. So you might see a, an unfamiliar face in uh, having pinned one of your things. You could click into that real easily, and it's almost like a ripples diagram here on Google+. You could just click right into a bunch of different pins, say thank you, you know, or, and maybe, you know, maybe depending on who they are or if they expand it on the description, just build up you know, build a relationship with them that way or, or check out the rest of their boards. Yeah, you know, using using Google Analytics, I mean, I'm sorry, Pinterest Analytics uh, to find your, uh, who's been repinning or who's been pinning from your site is really a useful tool. Um, and that's probably, I think, one of the most useful aspects of Pinterest Analytics. It's a little bit quirky. It's a little bit clunky. That's not what they do. Yet, hopefully, that's something that gets refined 
pretty soon here. Uh, but if you go into most recent pins, that'll show you who's pinned from your site into Pinterest, which you don't get a notification of in your notifications box, you know, in, on your Pinterest account. So then you can see that, you know, maybe, you know, Wade went and visited my site and then pinned from my site, but I would have never known that unless I went into that area. Um, and then I could thank him and start engaging with him and, and, and that type of thing. Um, you know, so that that is one thing. Knowing who is pinning from your account, know or from your site, is definitely important information to keep up with. Knowing who's following you, check out your follower boards or your follower box. I guess click on it and see who's following you. You do get notifications, but sometimes you know, depending on how active your account is, you could miss that. You know, some you know really big Pinterest influencer or maybe an influencer on another social network that you're a part of has started to follow you on Pinterest. And you know, go ahead and start building up that relationship there by repinning from their account and commenting and, and things like that. Uh, Cynthia, can you explain to our viewers what the, the kind of the, the difference between a business and a personal account is and how you can tell? Um, with business accounts, there there really is no way to, to kind of see the difference like on, on Facebook where you have the friend or the like option. Um, it's, the, it's the same on Pinterest. Um, to know if whether you have a business account, um, you can go to business.pinterest.com and, you know, try to convert it and if you've already done that that's one way uh, or go into your settings and see if it asks for business name or if it asks for first and last name if it asks for first and last name then it's a personal account um, if not then it's a business account because sometimes I know I know a lot of people have done that in the past I'm like oh yeah I forgot I already did that or have I done that yet so that that's how you can tell right now yeah I did that so yeah. <laughs> that's why. Um, I, I do want to say something right here Jeff if you don't care um, that tip that Cynthia gave me a while back on um, I was going. To, I asked. I can't remember the, the name of the tool that I asked you about, Cynthia. But it was a um, a plugin that I could put on my blog, and it would allow me to uh, put widgets in my sidebar for my blog, and I could choose the pin that I wanted to. And Cynthia came back and said, "Well, I don't know know really about that one, but why don't you just go to to this place, and you can make your own pin, create your own thing." And um, and I tell you what, Cynthia, that I've got a on WadeHarvey.com. I've got my my tools that I use. I've created I, I, I've created an image. Um, I think it's a good image that people respond to. And I, I used your. Can, can you tell me the name of that site where you uh, where it's something dot Pinterest dot com? But I can't remember where you would go to create that pin. Yeah, so I think what you're talking about is the widgets that Pinterest themselves offers. Yes, so yes. yeah, so they give you codes and you can choose to either just have an individual pin, a widget of a pin, and that's how it used you used to be able to embed the full pin into blogs or wherever, you know, you can put it in HTML. Um, but now they, they've given you just a widget, so it's kind of the in-stream Pinterest view of the pin. It's really condensed down. Um, or you can choose to feature a whole board or or your whole account in a widget. And you can now you can adjust the width and, and the height and all that kind of stuff of the widget if you just wanted to fit in your sidebar or maybe underneath a blog post or even in an email if you want to do that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, but you can just find that on, on business .pinterest.com um, and in there they have a widgets category and that's where you get your pin it buttons and, and, and that type of thing too. It's very cool. I just used it uh, this week uh, talking about Stefan's book and, and his board of those tips. I, I pinned the entire board, all of his Google Plus tips inside the, the blog post. It looks so good too. That, that <laughs> I'll have to check awesome. that one out, yeah. That's cool. I did it as well on my um, on the the page that the blog that the board goes to because they all go to one page um, it, I broke the pins up into I broke the tips because I'm up to 25 now I think uh, into fives groups of five so under each subheading I just did the I did the widget builder the horizontal one and it looks really cool it's a nice little divider too so just mm -hmm. to kind of break things up but it encourages people to be able to go and pin right from there and yeah it's pretty neat I dropped the link by the way to um uh, to that that uh, tool we're talking about, the widget builder on Pinterest, I, I put it into the event comments. Oh, great, great, yeah. Mm. It's a really long URL, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The question, another question I have, and, and Stefan has written a post about this, that, you know, every if you have one of those articles where it says the best time to pin or to schedule a post, a unicorn dies. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, is, is there a better time to pin on, I mean, I know kind of what works for me, is it different for everybody, or is there kind of a general rule? Do it on this day at this time. What What's kind of the thought on that? It depends on who you're trying to reach. 
and what what's going on. So like for me when I when I'm pinning about my content, so how to use Pinterest for you know marketing and that type of thing. It, it, it they they tend to do best during weekday you know work hours you know where I'm at. Um, every now and then if I pin something on the weekend, it will get a little bit of attention too. But if I, you know, for some clients, they're trying to reach working parents. Well, I, if I pinned it during the middle of the day, they're not on Pinterest in the middle of the day. They're at work, you know. So usually pinning for them at night is better. Overall, from the studies I've seen, you know, and, and those studies that make unicorns die and all that kind of stuff, the best time, the most active time on Pinterest is Thursday evenings, East Coast time. Um, so, it, you know, of course, it depends on what part of the world you're in. We've got to remember Pinterest is a global service. Um, so there's people pinning your stuff from all around the world and, um, you know, so so keep that in mind. But it really does depend on who and you know who you're trying to reach and what you're what you're I guess you're what you're trying to say, what you're trying to communicate, and what you want them to do when they see the pin that you're pinning up at that particular time. Yeah, yeah. If it's a marketing one, then there might be different context. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Very cool. So that's the whole article, guys. You just heard basically the stuff <laughs> Jeff was talking about. Cynthia nailed it, and I just wrapped it. I brought it home awesome. right there. Awesome. Yeah. That's why we have you on the show. Just that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, Peg Fitzpatrick. Uh, one of the things she talked about is to show your personality on Pinterest. Do you still re you recommend that for um, uh, even companies? Um, I know that. I think it helps for me that I, they're not getting a glut of one kind of content if they follow me. They get you know I post mainly food, I post social media stuff, I, you know, man caves that I think are cool. So I do kind of a, a variety, and that seems that it, it, it people don't get tired of it. Is that kind of your experience as well? Um, I think it depends on what how your business is set up. Um, Jeff, you are your business. Everybody here, you guys are your business. You're the main, you know, big part of it. And same for me. I am my business, and I want them. I want people to know me and to feel comfortable with me. And and maybe we have a hobby that we share in common that we could, you know, then have another way to connect. You know, just aside from you know the business side of things. Um, so that makes sense for all of us here. But let's take Target. You know, for example, we mentioned them earlier. For them to pin, you know whatever random stuff about you know the CEO of Target maybe we care maybe we don't um, you know but we would have to tie it in so for Target what they could do is do more about Target culture corporate culture and what they do maybe their missions the the you know the the philanthropic work that they do in their you know in the communities I know they give a lot back to local schools and, and things like that to show more of the human side, the personal side of, of Target, that's a good way to do that. Um, another company that does that this really well is Taco Bell, which you wouldn't think of, um, really doing great on Pinterest. But what they've done is they've actually taken Taco Bell careers, the actual HR side of Taco Bell corporate, and they have their own Pinterest account. So it's all about working there and corporate culture and the fun events they do. You see people wearing silly hats and running around the you know the office and the, you know the big cube farms, but they have fun there. Um, the training that they do, the outreach that they do to you know grow young kids into professionals and you know that kind of stuff. So it lets me know a lot about Taco Bell, even though it's 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 not you know I guess about them as a company and not necessarily just about their products. Gotcha. So that's important. It's an important tip. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, uh, fellows, do you got any other questions you want to? I mean, this has been a great show. Um, <laughs> you guys uh, have any more questions for Cynthia? I mean, Come on, are you ready? Are you ready? He's ready. I have one. <laughs> yeah, I got one too. Go ahead. More of a logistics question. When you create a new board, do do people who are following just a couple of your boards get a notification? Get an email saying that you created a new board, or is it everybody? Or, if, or people are following all your boards. Like I'm confused. I'm totally confused by that. And obviously, there's a strategic element to it too. So I'm I'm curious if you know how that whole thing works. Yeah. So in my experience, I found that if you if somebody is following your entire account, if they click that follow all button when you create a new board, they'll follow that one. Let's say they only followed your Google Plus board, and then you created another board about barbecue grills or something, they wouldn't necessarily follow that or get notification about that unless you're also friends on Facebook. Um, yeah, I know, it makes, it's crazy. Um, what will happen is that you'll, yeah, <laughs> you, you'll, in your notifications, in your notifications, you will get a message saying your friend, whoever, just created a new board about blah, blah, blah. And then you'll get a notification about it. So um, in, in my description, my bio, I should say, if you're not going to follow my boards, friend me on Facebook. <laughs> 
um, yeah, I guess you could. Um, right, but cool. Facebook Facebook doesn't get a notification. Your Facebook connections don't get a notification that you created a new board. It's, it's just this weird connection um, since there is so much limited connection between Facebook and Pinterest. I just thought it was a little bit odd, but that's that's the way it works now. And I've been getting notifications that some of my friends have created these new boards, and it's like, okay, that's great, you know. And um, but it is it is one way that you can, I guess, be notified. I will say this, and uh, I don't want to capitalize on all of our last minute time here, but I will say this, when I when I did that board about the tips, marketing the board itself was huge. I mean, I picked up a couple of hundred followers that day just because I said, hey, everybody, I have a brand new Pinterest board. That's all I said. Uh, well, I said yeah. a few extra things, but that was about, that was the crux of it. Yeah, and, that's um, why people people are using Pinterest. People people are using it to to get help, to solve their problems, to learn, to you know whether it's a recipe or Google Plus tips. It's all information that's useful to me. Um, so that's you know that's I'm not surprised that you found that. Yeah, market your boards, especially yeah. if they're new, because we just realized that they don't your followers don't get an email if you create a new one all the time. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Wade, you had another question? Yeah, uh, real quick. Um, uh, Pinterest changed their terms of service. Um, uh, I guess two or three weeks ago, maybe maybe longer. What what would you say to people that are using third-party sites um, to build Pinterest followings and uh, getting repins? I would say be very very careful. Um, you know they they really want to cut down on spammers. They really want to cut down on people abusing. Pinterest in any way, um, and really read those terms of service at Pinterest.biz or business.pinterest.com, um, and make sure that you're not breaking any of those rules. And pretty much, it's getting paid to pin. You know, so if a corporate sponsor comes and say, "Hey, if you pin our product 25,000 times, we'll give you a penny for each pin," which, of course, I want to get as many pennies as I can. I'm going to pin a lot, and that's not authentic use, I guess, of, of Pinterest, and that's what they're trying to stop. Um, there are some third-party tools where you can kind of trade and, and do all sorts of things with pins. Um, those seem to fall in a gray area, so I would really recommend that you just go check out those terms and see what how it fits for your situation. Awesome. Well, Cynthia, we're at the, the half-hour mark. I really appreciate you coming on the show. It's been... I'm going to have to watch this again. There's so much good stuff <laughs> that you... Uh, that you gave us, so it was awesome. Um, but I did, I promised that we'd give an announcement at the end of the show, so I'm going to do that now. Um, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that now. We're going to, I told everyone this is the last episode of the Manly Pinterest Tip Show, and that's true. We are going to wrap it up after this episode, but we are going to go and change and rebrand the show to, uh, I think it's going to be the Manly Show. We're going to keep the same panel. We're just going to be able to talk a little bit uh, outside of Pinterest. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but we've got uh, Mike Alton, who is one of the best bloggers on Google+. We've got Stefan, who has written a book on Google+, and is an incredible mm -hmm. email marketer. And Wade is Wade. No, Wade is Wade is an incredible... <laughs> he's got a re great show uh, called Relationship Marketing. He is the, the psychology expert. And so we want to talk about some different stuff. And so we don't want to be limited. We're going to keep coming back to Pinterest because we all use it. But we're going to rebrand it because so, these guys have some great uh, tips and info and... Uh, we just want to expand the show, so that's what we're going to do. In fact, you know, we're going to call it the Manly Show. But if you guys in the who are watching can come up with a better one, um, sure, put it in the comments. Tell us what you'd like us to talk about. Uh, a new name for the show, and if we like it and we use it, I will give you free front row seats to all the hangouts we do. So, Ooh. yeah, I know, pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> Only here, folks. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. Uh, starting in March, I'm going to go with Ronnie Bincer to South by Southwest. And so after we get back from that, we're going to um, start the, the new show. So I appreciate all the guys who've been on here and all our guests, and it's been a, a great time. But before we wrap up, Cynthia, can you tell us where we can find you and your blog and podcast and all, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, everything can be found at ohsopinteresting.com. Great, ohsopinteresting.com. We'll make sure that's in the comments. Um, gentlemen, it's been an honor and a pleasure serving on the Manly Pinterest Tip Show with you. And we'll see you on the other side. Cynthia, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. No, we'll thank you. you. It was fun, guys. Thanks. Bye. See you.